I made it you guys I made it I'm here filming this video <laughs> I am so excited because this is not the day I was supposed to film this but we're working with it we're working with it so welcome to another therapy session you guys where I don't have to worry about it too much editing which makes me very very happy so I am just gonna do my makeup I only done my brows and prime my lid so you guys know the drill because you know I just like to tell you guys what it is it's beautiful out I have the windows closed because I don't want you guys to hear the outdoors but I have the kids outside don't worry I have a camera system I can see them anywhere I, I can see if they're running around when they're not supposed to be so I'm good so today there's something in my eye so today I want to do my makeup and I want to use this palette you guys I just want to use it I just want to use it so I'm gonna use this palette for today so what's new guys what's good in the hood so you guys I have a serious story to tell you guys you guys know that I have the title of Snow White <laughs> well that title just continues to haunt me um I would say about a week or two ago I think a week and a half I would say uh, we were out in the back of the house we were just talking having fun not really doing much, just chit-chatting with the kids and enjoying the fact that it's nice and cool and it's summer, obviously. So we were just sitting in the back and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we hear the most scariest cry for help. You know when you watch scary movies and you're always hearing the girl screech in like agony because somebody's literally slashing her or stabbing her or like beating the crap out of her? Well, that's the kind of sound we heard. And the thing is that we heard it from a distance in the woods and we were like, hmm, is that like we're just talking and we're not like really 100% realizing whether it's a noise that's happening or is it just. A passing by kind of thing where it's just like it sounded like it for a few seconds but it's not necessarily something we should be alarmed about so we're just there and then our oldest goes mommy I think somebody's getting hurt in the backyard and I'm like oh my gosh we jumped out of our seats so hard because as we're walking from the backyard towards the side of our house it sounds like it's coming from our neighbor's house and uh, we are aware that she's home alone she has a toddler she does have two dogs so we thought of two things one she one of the dogs is getting beat up beat, eaten up alive in the backyard or it's her getting physically attacked and we have no idea so i run towards the front of the house to see um if she's like in the house asking for help or whatever because i could see through her windows and mr man's walking towards their backyard and he's whistling and yelling to see if like the predator whoever it is um stops and um or like if they stop the person can scream for help because it sounded like a woman it didn't sound like a child it didn't sound like a man it sounded like a woman so i'm freaking out and i'm like oh and in the middle of all this our neighbor's calling mr man and uh she's like i'm home alone i just called my husband he's on his way home can you figure out what's going on in my backyard? And we asked her, my husband asked her, uh, are the dogs inside? And she's like, yes. She goes, I'm inside. I don't know what the sound is. So we're like, oh. so we go get a flashlight. I go to her front porch to comfort her because she's literally shaking up and with all <laughs> right to do so because I would have been doing it too. And it's not funny. Well, it's funny now, but back then, she was just mentioning how her husband is working a lot of late nights and she was like annoyed by it because she doesn't want to be home alone too much and here he is <laughs> not home again when this is happening so she's kind of mad she's like oh he's not home again and i told him to come home from work because blah, 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 blah. he has the leisure of going whenever he wants whenever he wants whatever time he wants for the length of time he wants basically and she was a little bit upset about it so we're just there she's like i called my parents because i didn't know what to do so her parents are also on her way so mr man's in the backyard figuring out what in the world is going on and 
I'm like just making sure she's like I was watching TV and I thought it was a television so she's like I lowered the volume I realized it was getting louder and closer to the house so she's like I literally ducked behind the couch and started shaking I called my husband I told him what was going on I told her I was gonna hang up and call the neighbor to see if maybe he can come over <laughs> so um her parents show up and her parents are they're not laughing but they're finding it hysterical because they always say that our our cul-de-sac is always active and there's always something going on with something it's never quiet out here <laughs> which is true you guys can see that all the animal stories that I have for you guys so we don't find anything in the backyard there's nothing where it's alarming where we see any like blood or anything so I remember uh, a while back where down by the by the beach area like wildlife allowed coyotes to roam to kind of like I forget what they were doing with certain species they were trying to control them and I've been told that coyotes sound like women screaming when they're calling out for whatever so I had said it may have been a coyote in our backyard and she's like, no, it sounded like a woman. I'm like, I know they sound like women. So after everyone was settled down, everyone came inside. We were just relaxing. I look up a video of coyotes um, yelling, screaming. I don't know what they're called. Howling. I don't know what it's called, but it was a scream. And I'm telling you, it was exactly what we heard. I will link this video because it's a YouTube video down in the description box. If you're brave enough to listen to it, you need to listen to it because exactly what you hear in this video is exactly what we heard. I mean, it's dead silent where we live. There is no main highway by where we live. Like we literally live in the woods. So you can hear a squirrel ruffling through the leaves clear as day in our backyard. I can hear the roosters ro uh, cocking whatever they do at five o'clock in the morning a mile away because it's so quiet back here so I when I heard I'm like oh my goodness it was a coyote so I sent it to the neighbor and she was like yeah I think that's what it was <laughs> and now we're laughing about it and then we're joking and I told her I said if we find a bear in my backyard we're selling this house I can't it's just non-stop with the wildlife like seriously do they just think they could just come around and do whatever they want between our two properties our our neighbor on our other side they've been here for like 30 plus years and it's never been this active and i swear it has something to do with us i don't know what it is but uh yeah so i i can add a coyote <laughs> to our list of wildlife that have showed up in our backyard or in our front yard or in our property period <laughs> but it let me tell you during the process it was scary it sounded terrifying it sounded I I just thought to myself oh my gosh she's getting mutilated in her backyard and her child is gonna have no mom like that's all I thought I'm like this little boy oh my gosh I hope she's not like you know we can't find her or whatever it is and I'm like oh if Mr. Man goes back there is he gonna get <laughs> like all these thoughts were going through my head like oh I gotta run inside the house with the kids and dial 911 it's a coyote stupid coyote like ugh. This, this is what we get for wanting to have peace and quiet and not live so close to so much noise. We end up getting wildlife noise instead. It's, it's interesting to say that how, how active it is where we live when it comes to wildlife and we're not that far away from like t huge towns or, or cities. But every, all the wildlife flocks to our area because it's very rural. Um, we don't have many things here as far as shops and stuff you really don't find new developments being popped up here and there in our town it's it, like like you we did with this house if this house was not on the market and we did not have the funds to gut it out and redo it we would have we were already looking to move away from this town because we just could not find a home that fit us that didn't involve new construction because they don't do new construction here so it's very active here, you guys. Very, very active, to say the least. And um, I'm sure it's going to get worse. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, get, I get scared. There was one time I let Leo out to go use the bathroom before um, we... 
what do you call it? Before I went to put him to bed, like go to bed, and we walk, I walked outside the patio area with him, and I, I promise you, I heard this squealing from this animal, and I know it was an opossum, because I grew up with those everywhere. And I could hear it getting closer and closer and closer, and the dog <laughs> stayed next to me, and I could see where he was looking in the woods, and I guess the opossum saw us or heard us, because I told him to stay, that then you heard it turn around and go away in the distance. So I'm like nervous even letting him go out by himself because I don't want him to get hurt. Not that um, he doesn't have all his shots and rabies and whatever else. He, he's up to date and everything, but still, you know, your dog getting bit, you still got to take him to the vet because if it's something, a puncture that's very deep, you know, he's he might need stitches, he might need this, and it's just money and... Uh, baby time that you got to do for your dog so I'm um, I always get nervous letting Leo out at night especially in the summer just because I feel like in the summer it's a lot more um, active around here than it is in the winter time in the winter it's not that bad you can hear the deer walking in our backyard because it's just quiet and that brisk wind like cold air that just cuts you you know that cold air so Oh, that was too much. That was our latest story, guys. Ah, oh, Snow White. At it again. I don't know. Uh, I don't even want to go outside at night anymore. <laughs> Mr. Man, one night, actually, on his way home from work, he said it was late night. He actually had a, a raccoon. He had to stop his car because the raccoon was right in the dead center of the road and it was just doing circles. It's just, he had his headlight. It was nighttime, and he had his headlights on. And the, the raccoon is just literally doing this on the street. And he's like, "Ah, oh, I need to go." <laughs> oh, it's horrible. So that's a story right now, you guys. <laughs> that's what I've been dealing with. And now, like, we literally keep tabs on each other in the neighborhood because we're like, Mr. Man got to the point where he literally knocked on the neighbor's doors, like, at least two, three houses down to make sure because some people have, like, preteen girls in the neighborhood and he was nervous that one of the girls was, you know, getting hurt. So, luckily, you know, he was smart enough to, like, knock on people's door with little girls to make sure that the girls were home and it wasn't them getting hurt. So, we knew it wasn't a human and we did not find any human remains. <laughs> Or blood or anything the next day it was as if it was just howling at I don't know what which makes me curious because coyotes always are in packs just like wolves so there must be more and I did hear that foxes do the same thing and we do have foxes here too so uh, and the and the interesting thing is after this happened two three days later we're seeing posts of like they're sharing it with us of posts of people seeing sightings of coyotes uh, around this area so I think it coincided with everything and we were just not going nuts. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a cry for whatever it was, mating, uh, fear, food. I don't know what their cry for was for and I just don't want to hear it again. That was a freaky sound, especially at night. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. So, you guys, I'm a little sad that summer is almost done, basically. I know once August hits, everyone forgets about summer and already starts getting into fall. Um, I'm not ready to let go of summer because then that means cold weather. Um, and so my makeup changes. And I haven't even gotten to the point of what makeup. I haven't even, like, touched half my makeup that I want to play with. I mentioned to you guys a lot about my <clears throat> like eyeshadow palettes and stuff. Let me let that sit for a little bit. Um, a lot of you, I asked you guys what I should do with my Pando's eyeshadows. I think I've decided what I want to do and I appreciate everyone's feedback on it because you guys are great at making me see like you guys see outside the box. I'm just like stuck here, you know? So I, I always like to get you guys' input, but obviously at the end of the day, it's my decision and what I do. And I think I've decided what I want to do. And I think that it's, I, I'm going to make a good decision. And if I need to tweak it more, I have that, um, 
like area space to do it where I didn't go full force the first time around and then I'm like oh now what do I do now you know what I mean like I want to test the waters first to see the first change I'm going to make and then if I need to make more changes I will but I am going to make changes to my pan those eyeshadows and it's nothing drastic I still want that that project I still enjoy that project and I still want to hit pan in as much as I possibly can it's just I I have so much beautiful makeup that I want to wear and I feel like sometimes I put too much pressure on myself to show progress and that's why I'm like trying to do use and abuse versus finishing up so much because I don't I want to use a lot of things which brings me to the other point of I realized that I don't try new indie brands anymore and i'm gonna explain to you guys why i realized this because i i'm seeing new indie brands and I, you guys are tagging me like oh have you tried this alex have you seen this new indie brand this is what i've realized i realized that once the community started to realize that there was amazing indie brands out there everyone and their mom is deciding to do a brand which is fine uh, that's not why I'm upset. That's not why I'm like stopping. Why I'm stopping is because I've realized that the few times that I have tried a new indie brand, not all the time, but a few times that I have tried, I've realized that I am paying for an eyeshadow palette. And I'm not going to point out brands. I'm just saying in general, like for the most part, nine out of ten new brands that I've tried recently in the last year or two have been the quality of Juvia's Place but three times the cost so I realized like why am I why am I wasting my time chasing that new indie brand when I have the same quality in Juvia's Place and I'll I'll pay the Juvia's Place price because they're inexpensive versus a $12 palette that should that somebody's charging 35 for plus shipping I'm like, no, I'll just stick to the few brands that I do like. And if they release something, then I don't mind buying it. But that's why I haven't really been exploring new indie brands lately. It's just, I've realized that I have tried every single formula. Unless something's really looking unique or really catching my attention, I'm just, I'm okay. I'm okay with getting the newest Sydney Grace. I'm okay with getting the newest Davina. I'm okay with getting the newest Menagerie because I I uh, I love the formula and I know I'm not going to get disappointed. So I'd rather get those palettes and review those palettes knowing that I am going to love them versus trying out the newest thing just to get the views or being the first one to showcase this new brand and then everyone else follows for views or for attention. I just... I don't want to waste my money like that. Not anymore. I think I'm over it. And the funny thing is I've realized some people that I've watched that used to review constantly new brands are no longer doing it either. They haven't announced it, but you could see that they have slowed down drastically. And it is exhausting too, you guys. It's so exhausting and so expensive that there comes a breaking point. There has to come some sort of like breaking point for that. So that's why you haven't really seen too many new indie brands and I'm just using what I like. I love my makeup. I have so much great makeup like this. This is a great palette. In my opinion, I think it's really good. And I can come up with like a very, you know, noticeable neutral look or a very subdued one or I can add a pop of color if I want. It's just... I know what I like now and I'm not I'm not here so much for no, being known as the person who is reviewing the latest and greatest. I'm here because I love to use what I have. I want to share and remind people that you can use what you have and enjoy it. Things are the same. Nothing is unique anymore. I'm using my Jouer. Oh, by the way, I used uh, Give Me Sun. That was Give Me Sun by MAC. I'm using Topaz here. Um, but yeah, that's why you haven't seen me review too many new uh, brands here. I just... I, I, I don't know if I've lost it. Also, the fact that I've been on here for so long that my interest as far as 
what I watch on YouTube have not been the same either for a very long time. I just never announced it. I still always watch my people that don't show a lot of new makeup releases that don't show the latest palette that don't always review something new i'm always watching those people that don't do that if you're if you're constantly posting a will i buy it i'm probably not watching it if you're posting the newest uh palette i'm probably not watching it um if you are sharing your favorites in your own collection that i see that you have then yeah i'm gonna watch it if you're doing project panning of course i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna use this palette right here from bh I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, I watch things that are not going to trigger me to constantly want the latest and greatest. I don't want to know what's new. I've missed so many makeup releases because I just don't watch somebody sharing the latest and greatest. And I'm kind of happy because I have so much that I necessarily don't have the space, one, to add any more stuff and if I am going to bring something new in I want it to be something that's going to bring value to my collection not so much just collect just taking up space so I don't I don't watch a lot of makeup uh videos I watch more of like oh my gosh I am obsessed with Dodo do you ever watch Dodo Dodo is a make uh, channel that shares stories of animals that have been rescued it's not necessarily just dogs or cats i mean any type of wildlife that you know gets hurt and there's babies that need fostering they have stories of like um uh adoption stories or rehab stories of pets and you just see these pets just triumph it's just the cutest thing any kind a cow they've had cows on here they've had llamas i mean like anything and it's just the kindest thing and these stories with these families and their pets it's just it's so rewarding to see people being so kind and so sweet to pets or animals in general that you just like that kind of channel just uplifts you and reminds you that humanity is still kind and there are good people out there and it just reminds you of that it doesn't bring you down it actually gives you encouragement to be nice to that male lady who's always mean to you or whatever you know what I mean I love watching that I always watch their episodes and they give you like two episodes a day or so and they're only like four minutes long so it doesn't take up a lot of my time but they are the cutest things I've watched my my thought process for the wildlife maybe that's why I'm considered Snow White I don't know maybe that's why the wildlife comes to my house <laughs> but um it's just nice to watch I oh I've been into cooking channels for a very long time a very very long time i have found some amazing cooking channels where i am um learning new things getting ideas i still if anybody has a cooking channel that cooks food that does not involve dairy i would be so happy if you could send, leave me that suggestion because sometimes some recipes I really can't do because it's all dairy and we're a lactose intolerant family. So that's why I um, like to watch cooking channels just because I can, I can uh, benefit out of it. I just tweak the recipe to do what I want, obviously. But I do like cooking channels. I like to watch, what else do I like to watch? There's a lot of fun stuff that I like to watch that has nothing to do with makeup you guys don't get me wrong I still watch my makeup videos and my channels it's just um some things are boring like it's repetitive this the same people do the same thing over and over and I'm just like okay another will I buy it okay another this I'm trying to keep it fun oh the other one I like to watch is um DIY Oh my goodness if I was working I would be so broke because of DIY <laughs> but I watch a lot of channels that do DIY um, going to the dollar store and I've done DIY because of it or to the Target dollar section or the Walmart section or to how to be creative how to refurbish furniture that kind of stuff like I've been really into that and I have been having a blast watching that and 
the only downside to those is right now for instance they're posting already stuff for the fall and i'm not ready to give up summer so i'm probably going to be late to the fall stuff <laughs> but that's fun too and i think that that has to do something with being a homeowner or a uh somebody who has their own place doesn't necessarily have to own it but i just like to you know change up my uh my house and make it look different every year so that might be a reason why I'm into it, but I really like it. It's fun. It gets me to be creative and I can get the kids involved too, where they could do stuff. So I don't mind it. I would love to know what channels you guys are into that is not makeup related. There's a few, there's a few Spanish cooking channels that I watch that I just love the recipes and I've redone them myself for my family and they have loved them. Um, I do, I follow the one guy that's very famous that, I forget his name, but he like dupes the meal. Like if he buys the Taco Bell crunch and he makes his own crunch for cheaper or the chicken, you know, the chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A, he's done it cheaper. That I forget his name and he has a cookbook out. He's very famous, I'm sure. But he, he does a great job at sharing how to do things it's just some some ingredients i have no idea where to buy these special mushrooms or whatever things so i just gotta wing it sometimes sometimes his recipes are not what's the word they're not relatable because i don't have that special sauce in my kitchen to use all the time so i'm not just buying it a big old jug for one recipe so I try to find channels that are relatable, that are, are going to use ingredients that I would use every day. Alrighty, you guys. So I finished my uh, mascara. Let me put on an inner corner highlight. Do, 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 do. Where is my inner corner highlighter? So I'll just use this one. I'm just going to grab this one and put it in the inner corner. Cowboy Rick. I'm going to start calling Mr. Man that. Cowboy Rick. <laughs> that would be funny. All right. And then I just put on my mascara. And for my lips, I use this. This is the Dior Fluid Added Stick. These are discontinued, but I'm sure there's something similar out in the market. This one was in or is in the shade Wonderland. Mm, it's one of my favorites. It's a gel formula, but it's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. All right, you guys. That's it. I thank you guys so much for being patient with me with my computer issues. I already got one part fixed on my laptop, which is allowing me to upload as much as you guys are seeing. So I'm very excited because I got four videos up this week. I That just warms my heart because I was able to do that. Um, don't forget to check out yesterday's video if you are interested in Sydney Grace's sale that's starting on Monday. I did a whole full review on that. I think I'm going to use one of her palettes soon just because I want to use it. So anyway... That is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, sitting back. If you have any channels that you want to uh, recommend, let me know. I would love to explore more of YouTube besides makeup because it's always fun to search stuff. My kids have found a lot of stuff on YouTube, kids. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later on. I'll put my videos on the screen. Until then, adios.